Hey everyone, it's Tiffany from Let's Get Scrappy and we are going to do um, our two for one special tutorial. Um, so if you did not see my walkthrough for this Poo mini album, I did state in there that for um, the project, it's a remake of a project I did before I became a Country Craft Creations design team member. And... I never did a tutorial for this one and I have several people still asking for me to do a tutorial. Oh, I love this collection. This is with CCC's Country Bunny collection. It's stunning, 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 stunning. And this is my baby. These are like the ones that I save and nobody gets. This is my special one. I love it so much. So I decided to do the tutorial and make it in um, with the brand new CCC Pooh's Adventure with Friends collection and I did use um, uh, items both from the 12x12 12 12 as well as the 8x8 8 8, as well as cutting them into the cover sheet as you can see. Um, you don't have to have both. I'm trying to think. Probably if I was going to get one I would get the 12x12 12 12 if you want the cut aparts and the bigger die cuts. Um, I don't know why I'm pointing at those because I actually cut those out myself. Um, so it just really depends. But I did use some elements from the 8x8, eight eight, not a ton, just a few. And then the rest mostly was from the 12x12. 12 12. So this is an 8x8 eight eight mini album with a 1.5 inch spine. We are going to go ahead and get into the tutorial. So we will put these little cuties to the side. I think I'm going to just set this one up here. And I got something in my eye. It's driving me crazy. Not that you guys can see it, but oh my gosh, I can't do anything because I'm blinded. <laughs> it wouldn't be a Tiffany video if there wasn't something crazy happening. Okay, so you are definitely going to need your album making supplies so um, get out your scoreboard and your paper trimmer get all your goodies and um, I'm gonna go through first what we need for the paper so I'm gonna give you the cuts first if you don't like it that way go ahead and fast forward because I still show the cut paper when we're putting the book together so you could figure it out from there too but you will need two pieces, and I didn't write on these like I normally do, of chipboard that are 8x8. Eight eight. And you're going to need two of those. So two pieces that are 8x8. Eight eight. And then for the spine, you need just one that is one and a half. Ooh, that's terrible handwriting. Can't do that up in the air by eight. <laughs> Oh my gosh, my handwriting keeps getting worse and worse. So that's what you'll need for the chipboard. And then for the actual um, cardstock. And I did, um, where, do, where is it? I feel like I'm missing some sheets somewhere. I know I am. Hold on, I missed them. But I did use uh, Country Craft Creations White Artisan Cardstock. Here it is. Okay, so to cover the chipboard, and I didn't write on these either, what, what's up with that? You need two pieces of 10 by 10 to cover your chipboard. Then to cover the chipboard spine, you need one piece that is four and a half by 10 roughly like usually um the rule of thumb is whatever size your spine is which this is one and a half add three inches to it so you have one and a half on a one and a half wingspan on each side i had this piece left on my table i'm using it it's four and a half i'll survive so you could either do the four and a half like i did if you have that scrap on your table or if you want to cut into a new sheet you can do the five by eight and still be okay. And then to cover that, once it is put together in the book, um, you need a piece that is four and a half by seven and seven eighths. 
And all these smaller pieces, like I always say, I always cut, I know people do the opposite. I cut my larger pieces first, and then I go back and grab all the cutoffs, and that's what I use for everything else. And then for the hinge, you will need four inches by seven and five eighths. And we will do the scoring kinda together. Then we have our pages. <clears throat> so you will need two pieces. This is gonna be page for page one and two. So two pieces that are seven and three quarters by 12. And then we're gonna score at seven and a half. Then you're gonna need for page three, this is seven and a half by 10 and three quarters. And we're gonna score at three inches. We will attach that so that we have our pocket pages. You will need three pieces that are seven and a half by eight and three quarters. And then on the eight and three quarter side, we will score a half inch on each side. So those will go together. Those are gonna be our pages. Then for page one and two, you'll need two pieces that are five by seven and three quarters. And then on the five side, we're gonna score a half inch. So these are the flaps that are for pages one and two. So that is like the base of one and two and then starting three. But I promise you guys, this is really easy once you get going. So on the back of page three, you have this um, top flap, but it's four by seven and a quarter. And on the four inch, we just score a half inch. And then for that waterfall, we're doing Michelle's stacked waterfall. So you'll need one piece that is three and a quarter by nine. And then we'll go through the scoring together. Then you'll need one piece that is three and a quarter by eight. And I don't know if you guys can see, but we're gonna score at three and a quarter, three and three quarters, four and a quarter, four and three quarters. Kind of dark, why is it always like, I don't, I don't just don't understand. Um, and then to finish it off, you will have a piece that is three and a quarter by seven inches and then score at three and a quarter and three and three quarters on that seven inch side. So that is for the pages. On the inside left cover, you need for a photo mat. This piece is seven and seven by seven and three quarters. The large pocket is seven by nine and then we're going to score a half inch on each on three sides as you can see here i did try to prep some of this so that way we can go a lot faster um then this piece is a larger flap that is on the inside cover five and a half by seven and scored a half inch and then this piece is um, the small flap and it is four by six and you're gonna score it a half inch. So that cut apart that I used, I did have to trim that down because this isn't a true four by six. Now, if you want yours to be a true spot to fit a four by six photo, you'll have to make this um, four and a half. No, technically you would need to make it like uh, four and three quarters by six and a quarter if you want that it's just going to change the difference that you have you know if you try to imagine this is in the album like so so it does change these are evenly spaced but totally up to you just want to give you an idea and then i'm going to give you real quick the photo mats and you don't have to do all the photo mats and tags that i did Again, it is up to your preference. You can add more to because there are still a lot of scraps left over. Um, but you'll need three of these. Let me write three. Three large photo mats that are seven and a half by seven and a half that goes inside the pockets. You will need two 
four and a quarter by six and a quarter, and then we score in half, basically at three and a quarter. These are two little booklets. Then you're gonna need three, four and a quarter by six and a quarter, and these are just photo mats. So you need three of those. I know the pencil is kind of hard to see. Um, and then on the back of page one, this is the bigger tag. It's just three by five. You can do any shape you want or any size, I should say. And then the two little tags are two and a half by four and a half. And then the photo mat for page three that has a three by four cut apart on it and I matted it is three and a quarter by four and a quarter. So again, these are just if you want to, you don't have to do any of these that I just showed you. So for now, let's get going on our chipboard. And I wanna just show you guys, we're doing um, the lay flat method, Tamara's lay flat method for this project. And you don't need any tools to do this if you do not want it, want to have any tools or I know it gets really pricey being in this fun hobby. You don't have to have all those things. You can still do everything without all that stuff. All you really need is some scissors, paper, roller, and glue. <laughs> so um, what I normally do, because it's just really fast for me, is I just score an inch on each side. And we'll put the chipboard down, but I'm going to show you another way if you're somebody who likes all the fun tools that are out there. So we will go ahead. And just know these don't have to be perfect when you lay them down either. And I've said before, you don't even need a full inch. It's just kind of the rule of thumb. But I've said before, if... I have paper and it's only half inch on each side. I'll use it. Sometimes I mess up my measurements and don't want to waste paper. So just stick that down like that. And then come in and burnish. And then we'll put the other one on before we glue these down. Okay, so you have your next piece. I'm gonna need a trash bag for all this. Score tape, hold on one second. I'm just gonna put a paper bag right here. Okay, so then this one, this is a fun tool from Country Craft Creations. These are fluorescent. I just, I don't like the bright neon color. <laughs> So for now, I've just kept the backing on there. Eventually, I'll probably cover these in my own, like little turquoise Tiffany blue color. You know, I know I'm, I'm weird. So you can get this L bracket. And there are um, several different items, and I will link it in the description box again if I remember. But these are um, the CCC spacers. So this one is one inch all the way around. There's now one as one inch plus one and a half if you're doing like the spine. So this is just really easy. We are just sticking. This is in there already. The paper is up. And then you just fit this right in there. Like so. Put it down. And you're good. And if I can get my nails under there. And then pull that up. And now we have that one on there. So there's different ways you can do it. You can use it all kinds of different, or you can use all different kind of techniques for it. But these are available at CCC. It does make it nice and even. Okay, and then we are going to, let me get my, I knew I was gonna forget something, of course. I'm gonna get my score tape. You can use glue. I don't like to. <laughs> I don't like to, so you guys are gonna have to just sit or just fast forward if you already know how to do this. Because it is pretty slow. Watching my do it. And I've done this all different ways. I do um, 
I've done one inch just on the bottom square tape and then I ran out of it for a while so I haven't got back into that but you also can do a quarter inch if you don't like wasting if you feel like this is a waste of square tape you could do a quarter inch instead of I have the three eighths I still add a little bit of glue to it and I'm gonna put on both and then we'll do the spine piece and then we'll do all the cutting okay do you guys even like having the actual cover done in the tutorial I know not everybody knows how to do a cover I mean, again, I always say you guys can just fast forward. I, I just, I don't know. I feel like this part is so boring. Although, there are people who love making the covers. And I do not. I do not. I like, I don't even know what is my favorite part. Because I struggle. I am like the slowest finisher. I can get the base of the book together pretty quickly um, once I have a rhythm of, you know, kind of what paper I want where. I go fast, but then embellishing, oh, you think, you think, like you'll have all your paper down, you're like, oh, I'm, I'm pretty much done, I just got to add a few embellishments. <laughs> and then you're doing the photo mats and the tags and the extra stuff, and I swear that takes longer than making the book by scratch. It is crazy how long it takes me. And I'm probably the only one. I don't know. Okay, so get out your four and a half by 10 piece. Like so, I already have the score tape on here. We are just going to take this off. And just stick it down. You can eyeball it, which is what I'm going to do. Again, it'll eventually do what it's supposed to. Right? Once you fold it all up and everything. Now, usually on this one, I do glue. So, and I'll show you that in a second. So let's get these. I'm going to get to where is my mat? I just had it in my hand. Nope, I did not. I imagined that. I feel like this mat is very busy to see on camera. So I don't really use it a lot. Okay, now we do want to come in and burnish everything. So there's a good stick. And camera's gonna shake, so sorry. That'll be my New Year's resolution is to figure out all my filming situation. I will say, so I have been off now for a month, the first two weeks didn't really count because it was retreat for a week then I was like sick and tired and all of the above for another week so I have for the past two weeks well and then week four was Thanksgiving so that was a whole nother time frame of not getting a lot done I can't remember if I did this one, so we'll just do it again <laughs> and I don't think so um so I I've done a lot of cleaning. I still have, you know, a lot of stuff to do. I still have to tackle my two rooms, my son's room that is just filled with clothes that I like I would use it as my room to get dressed for work in. My daughter shoves all the stuff she doesn't want in there. All her old furniture, etc. And the game room just has all kinds of crazy stuff shoved in there. From her moving out, her moving back in, him moving out, but leaving half his stuff. It's just a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. We're going to go ahead and miter these corners. If you have a tool, use your tool. Or 
I just come in and eyeball it. The tools are nice if you like that just really clean edge. Just make sure you have about an eighth of an inch from your chipboard to the edge of the paper. And if you don't, just remember tip tip, not that it's my tip, but just sharing a tip with you. You could just take your scrap, if you fold these and find that the chipboard is showing, just glue this on there and you're, you'll be fine. There's always ways to round it. And I've done it a bunch of times. So if you do it, don't worry. Just keep going, just keep going. So that is the next thing I will tackle is the two upstairs rooms. I've pretty much cleaned everything on the main level. And I'm talking like, you know, kind of spring cleaning, cleaning organizing, getting rid of all the piles I had everywhere just because, I mean, literally I would run in from traveling. I would drop a suitcase, a bag of something at the front door, and then it would stay there for a long time. Then I'd move that pile for whatever reason somewhere else. So I got all my, like, luggage put away, all that good stuff. Um, so we'll see how December goes. It was really nice on Black Friday to not have to get up at like three in the morning and not to have to stress about like hurry up and make food because you got to get ready for work blah 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 so you know the weekend felt normal the weekend didn't feel like anything majorly different but I did on Black Friday I was like oh oh I don't have to go anywhere so that was nice okay so we're gonna go ahead let's get the sealed up You know, Tiffany, keep on blabbing. Sheesh, and I probably, usually I don't take these off first. I come in and bend the paper to kind of work it. Just makes it a little bit more flexible to work with. Oh my goodness, these lights are hot. Get my glue. Just add a bead. And close up those ends. Push down, fold over. You guys know the routine, so go ahead and fast forward. If you don't want to hear my craziness. So we'll do this again. Is that push down, fold over, boop, give it a little burnish. Just come in with those sides. Okay, and then take the tape off the the rest. Who did some shopping? Country Craft Creations had a discount. And then they have another one, Cyber Monday. This video should be out right on Cyber Monday. Um, there is a discount. This, if you're watching this video like in, this, in the future, um, it is for 2023 Cyber Monday. I think, what is it? I want to say it's... 10% uh, off gift cards. You could buy yourself a gift card, right? And get 10% off. That is definitely a good plan. I kind of like that even better because then if newer things come in later, you know, you can still get yourself a nice little discount. Burnish. And I can see I have a little bobble. Boop. It's not anything major. I always have them. But I just snip them off. And again, nobody sees anything because there's way too much pretty paper to notice all the flaws. I just always tell you all, all about them. Okay. 
Okay. So I'll get that just nicely burnished. Just gonna check my corners. It has a little nubbin. Okay, now the next one. Again, you could bend your cardstock so that it is ready to go. Add your little bead of glue. So sometimes I just get going on and I'm not even paying attention to see if you guys can see anything. You don't have to do the glue part, I just do. And give it a good burnish. in these corners push them in take a little score tape off this probably is like the longest part is doing the cover <laughs> I mean, maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Bend it over. Now, this would be pretty also if you're doing the poo collection um, in a craft cardstock as well as a cream or off-white because you have all those fun colors in there and yes of course you could do like the baby blue and the yellow if you really wanted to I'm just I'm not big on colored bases I like them when I see other people do them I just can't do them for some reason I think I've ventured out with like a navy before. I don't know that I've ever done a red base. But every time I see someone do them, they're adorable. I just can't do it. Just gonna clean up the little area. And then we will attach the other. So right now, let's just get this bent over. And just working the paper. Has anyone been watching any good shows lately? I just keep doing little reruns of all my shows. This past weekend I was about to watch Harry Potter from the beginning, which how many is there? I think there might be nine movies sequels and I've done that where I will just start from the beginning and watch things all over again I can't wait Bridgerton oh, you better come out on Christmas like you're supposed to okay I'm trying to see yeah I think I'm gonna I'm gonna do mine like this I do question this sometimes because sometimes I do get some cracking And I haven't figured out what it is yet. I still use it, but I do want to know why I get it sometimes. If you guys know, let me know. But I feel like sometimes it's either score tape related or just bulk of paper related. So 
So Tamara does hers where she cuts it off, but I always see the chipboard and I hate it. It drives me crazy. Even though it's a little corner, I can't stand it. I don't like seeing the craft colored paper bag colored chipboard. Okay. Push your scissors up against the top of that so that it is straight and I'm just mitering it which means just a little angle and I think we're good okay and then I'll just stick I could have took the glue all the way out usually I do doesn't really matter. It gets all stuck together anyways. Okay. So now we have this. So let's see. Glue, glue, glue. And I'm just again just kind of reshaping the paper. I really don't want cracking. And then I just come in and try to give it a clean. Not that this matters. <laughs> okay, so get your chipboard pieces. And again, I said this before, you can do it like this and um, put it in your scoreboard by pushing everything up to the top and then just lining things up and do it like that. Well, for me, I don't do that, but I do need some score tape because I don't like glue going all the way up. But these are good. I'm going to actually put it on here. I found that I like this a little bit better. I tell you guys, I change it up all the time. Always changing it up. It's just kind of like, what mood am I in? Okay, let's do that. And I'm gonna add a bead of glue just kind of down here. Oof, didn't mean to go up that high. Now, we're gonna attach it to this. So I'm just going to put some glue. For some reason, I'm very messy on tutorials with my glue. We all know this. <laughs> and then I just come in and I just put them together like so. I do leave just a little bit of a gap up there. Like a sixteenth of an inch. You can put them, I've done it where I've had them like totally, um, you know, even. But I just found it kind of like the little extra room. So now burnish that. And I don't do glue all the way up to the top because I hate seeing the dried clear glue. That's for any glue. Okay, I just want to make sure we're good. We're good there. Perfect. Okay, so now we'll get our other side on, and then it'll be time to build the book. So we're just going to put this there. It is so toasty. Very messy. Okay, 
And now we're going to take this and bring it up. Oops. There we go. So we'll cut you guys off a little bit. Yeah. We'll survive. Okay, burnish. Okay. So we have our book. Do do do. That looks good. Okay. Now we want to cover this area. So see how the piece that was shorter than what we normally do, which would be five, which would take us out to here. We're fine. And I want to do, ugh, what do I want to do? Usually I do score tape on this. I'm going to try glue. Let's, let's just do it. We're going to try some glue. And I need to make sure my writing, I'm going to put my writing down. I don't want anything to show. And then I'll show you how to do the spine, but we won't put the spine on necessarily right away. Or if we do, I'll just use my temporary uh, glue runner. I really just want to make sure that it is really good. Right there. Okay. get that into position burnish really good like you do not want to skip steps when it comes to building the book and come in here try to get that glue into the middle there and I don't push really hard Oh, I can see it. Um, I hate the bubbles. I don't push really hard. I just kind of, once the book is going, I work it in. And then you can squish it. Lay it flat. Squish it. There we go. Okay, so we are good on there tight. Just trying to see, this needs a little bit of glue under here. See if I had square tape, it would definitely be sealed, but you just, you know, you wanna have it really good. Really good. That one's just really thick okay so we have the base done now we're gonna do let's do the left inside cover here I'm gonna take the score nope we we'll need that so we'll just okay so what we need first is this piece that we scored at half inch on three sides so half then you turn, another half, turn, and then another half. This is our large pocket. We will put that down first. At least I think so. Just cut through that intersection. Kind of cut that one a little. And just miter the corners a little bit. Fold all these down with a good crease. Definitely gotta use your bone folder and have some good crisp creases. Does it still work the other way? Yes, but it just makes your book fluffy. You don't need fluff. No fluff. Okay, so we are gonna put down the bottom one first and I course I got a setup where I have like my second I mean let's be clear you guys know that I have like four of everything 
I should just have it all left over here. I just need to redo my room. And I can't wait because I have so much stuff coming. I got so many things from Michael's storage being like 50 and 70 off on some things. Just to redo the room. Okay. I want to make sure I don't go over the score mark. So I'd rather come up a little bit than be down too far. It's hard to see from this angle. Goodness gracious. The glue is going to dry on me. What is happening, people? What is happening? Okay. Let's just see what we're doing here. Does that still work? Yes, it does. So I think we are fine. Just need to make sure I don't want to go so the light is like shining right on there because it looks crooked. But it is on there right. I probably could have. Hmm. Good enough. Good enough. Let me get my tape tape. Here is my tape. Okay. So we're just going to stick that down. Fingerprints and all. Press the outer. Then we have these. Okay. I am going to use this eventually. I don't know how soon I'll get to it, um, but to highlight the pink papers is the plan. But we'll see. Might end up being a Christmas book. Who knows? Okay, so now get your other flaps. And we're just scoring a half inch on one side. So this is your five and a half by seven. And then you need your four by six, unless you altered the measurement. And they both have a half inch scored where the score tape is. Just fold this over. recommend dry fitting first but you're just putting these right on top of each other these are just your flaps same thing with this one I'm just eyeballing the center. And if you guys want on the back, I have nothing, but you could do the exact same thing on the back side too if you want to add more things. And then we have our photo mat, which just slides into here. You can round all the corners, you can leave them straight. Um, I'm going to show you something at the end with that. But now here, before you do your decorative paper, you would put your ribbon closure right here and right here, and then put your decorative paper down. So you could just write like ribbon, if you wanna use ribbon, I do an R for ribbon, or it could be like a magnet, an M, just to remind you to put it down first, okay? So now, let's do, we don't do this side, we're gonna do the pages. So we're going to set that aside, 
get out your base pages. So first we will do the three that are seven and a half by eight and three quarters. We just have it in here and we score a half inch on each side or at eight and a quarter. So you have to do that with all three and then we're gonna miter the corners like I already did. Miter the corners. So we have those three. Now all we have to do is come in and score marks. Just remember you can use glue or tape. And if you guys haven't seen, Country Craft Creations is doing a 2024 design team call. Um, ugh, I don't remember when the date is that everything is due. I think this is the first time that they've done, I think, it's the first time that I've seen like an actual design team call. Um, so I think she'll be doing that every year. So if, because the requirements are you do have to have um, a YouTube channel and post videos and you have subs. So if you don't have that, because I've had quite a few people say they're interested, just get it started now. Like just go for it. Because um, you never know, so just get going. If you have questions, just private message me. Um, I, I, if I, you know, see it, I will answer it, no problem. Um, there's others on here that can tell you. I support anyone wanting to start a channel, so I will try to help answer any questions. But yeah, just get started. Or if you do have it and you're interested, be sure to email. Um, I'll try to, if there's a link to it, I will try to put that in the description box. So th these two, in case I didn't say, which I don't think I did, were the two pieces that were seven and three quarters by 12, and we scored at seven and a half inches. So that leaves us a four and a half inch, four and a half? Right, can I add to me? Yeah, a four and a half inch um, flap. Then the third page is seven and a half by ten and three quarters, and we're going to score at three. So you just come in and score at the three and fold that. two pieces for pages one and two that are five by seven and three quarters and then with the five across up at the top we just score at a half inch here just like so and come in let's miter these corners and we're going to get these all put together I'm telling you like this part goes by fast we still have the hinge we have to do I do have that off to the side, so don't worry. Okay, I'll just push this over, get these little scrappy doos. Okay, so now get your three bases. So these should be seven and three quarters. So our pages are seven and a half by seven and three quarters once they are put together. And then I'm gonna do our pages like this. So this flap will be here on the inside. Dry fit, if you're doing wet glue, dry fit first. You might have just because when you have something scored and something's not, 
the measurements could be a little different depending upon your scoreboard. So just try to measure up on a straight somewhere. And if you have to trim off a little, hopefully it's just like on one side. Okay, so let me see. Got a little bit there. No, that is good. Yep. So I'm just going to trim off a little. It's probably crooked when I was cutting it. I am not even getting in there. <laughs> What side did I just do? Oh gosh, this scared me. I thought that was the side with the fold at first, the other fold. Okay, so this is off just a little bit too. It doesn't have to be perfect. I, I need to make a t-shirt that says that. And you guys know I say that mostly to myself. a little nervous because the fold is there okay so here is our first pocket page the front has nothing on it that's like this is like the easiest the easiest thing now we're going to take one of our little flaps this book is so easy but you can make it more if you want to and add more flaps use up some of those scraps this is just again people were asking me to do a tutorial for the other one and I thought this would be perfect because I love a good 8x8 eight eight for a baby album. Okay, I think it's just a little. It's going to drive me crazy if I see that as I'm decorating. Okay. So there is, make sure, opening right here, it's going to go on our um, hinge, page one, the front, flip to the back, and this is a little boo boo. The pockets were all done with decorative paper, so you can make your own pockets if you are someone who likes your stuff like that, but that is how they were made. So that's why this is so easy to put together. So let's do the next one. So this is our top. Now this fold I have on this side here. And I really just wanna make sure the side that has the fold is where I line up. You can use your scoreboard, put things in like that. Again, if you want to, whatever works best for you. Okay, so we're gonna just, yep, that works. Open the flap, burnish. Burnish, burnish, burnish. I so need to get my nails done. Hot mess. I will be getting those done soon. Okay. Now our other little flap. This was really just because I wanted a symmetrical um little layout. Okay. So, that's it for page two. That's it. <laughs> so, you have page one, front, back, page two, front, back, Openings, make sure your openings are going the same direction. Now we're going to do page three. And 
we have these up top to bottom because that is the length. This on the back is going to be our, um, nope, this is on the front. What is this? A bottom pocket. So it's going to go like this. And I just glued up the two sides. You can add gussets if you really want to. I find that unless you're putting a ton of stuff in there, the gussets don't keep things in the pocket. They tend to slide all over the place. And I like my, pipe, my pockets to be tighter. Burnish. Okay, and let's get, I'll just burnish this a little bit. So, we're gonna, I love this. I just love this little tool. I'm just gonna do a little bit. Doesn't take much. It'll hold the pocket closed. Like so. So that is now gonna be pocket. Flip this over. And we will do our piece that is four by seven and a half. And on the four side, you're just going to score it a half inch. Again, this is going to be our top flap. So it goes at the top of the page. So again, make sure you have your pages. You keep looking at the seven and three quarters versus the seven and a half. Seven and three quarters is our height. And do a dry fit. So this looks like this so far and this one's on the back. Because again, we make the large pocket with the decorative paper. And that actually helps not to have a ton of bulk too when you do that. Okay, so I think I have that on there where I want it. Okay, now let's do our stacked waterfall. So these are the three pieces that we are going to use. And then I will show you the scoring on this. So your piece that is three and a quarter by nine on the nine, we're gonna go three and a quarter, three and three quarters, four and a quarter, four and three quarters, five and a quarter, five and three quarters. So you have that and then the one that is three and a quarter by eight with the eight across the top three and a quarter three and three quarters four and a quarter four and three quarters then your piece that is three and a quarter by seven with the seven across the top three and a quarter three and three quarters and now we will stick those together I did add score tape to them already. Let me just get it all. Let's, let's burnish these first. Burnish. Peel this off. I'm going to add some wet adhesive. I like using score tape on these because then I know I get a crisp seal. 
but I'm just adding some wet adhesive. Did I just, yeah, I did that right. At least I think so. <laughs> now you're gonna skip the first score and line it up on that second one. Again, if you if it's easier to put your stuff in your scoreboard like so, which I could see that I am off a little bit. It's gonna freak everybody out. I'm just ripping this off. It's okay, it'll survive. I promise. Ooh, there we go. Okay, let me just put that back down. So I'll be stuck down anyways, it doesn't matter. Okay, now let's do that again. Okay, I have this all the way up to the top. You see, you know, if you do it like this, you'll get one side even, and whatever's excess, you can trim it. I'm just going really hard to make sure I don't have any bubbles. Okay, now let's do this one. I'm just folding them back and forth. Okay. Like so. Let's take this off. Add a little bit of adhesive. We're going to just do the same thing. Line that side up and push that side in. Might need my glasses. Okay, so we have it. It is good, and I could see that on that second one, it was a little bit bigger. So you just come in and just trim it off. Trim it off. Okay. So now should have folded that one first. We have a little waterfall, and I did use. Um, I want to fold this one up too. I did use a tight closure here as well. So if you do want to do that, then put that down before you put your paper down. Okay. So make sure I do not have that straight. So we are going to force it to be straight. Oh. Hard to see. Okay, so this is the top of our page. I'm just going to do this because you want to stick your decorative paper down first and then just say ribbon. For ribbon closure and I did like a ribbon closure there and you just kind of center it wherever you want and this is pretty much it I'll show you how to do the um, what do you call it mm hmm something oh the hinge so let's do that really quick so we have our hinge here that is four inches by seven and five eighths. And then we're gonna come in and score at a half inch all the way through. And I always say my measure, how I measure how big my hinge is, because most of the time my books I do a half inch in between. Um, I just do if I have three pages, I can't even see what I'm doing. If I have three pages, I know that that's three inches. 
because you need a full inch to have the hinge for the page. And then I'm going to have two gussets in between. So that is four inches. That is for a floating, what I call like a floating hinge. Even though it's not floating, you're still gluing it down. Um, but that's how I determine my size. And then I do like my hinge a little bit smaller than the actual page. So let's trim this real quick. Just take a little sliver off each end. Just a little sliver. Ooh. Sliver. I know this makes some of you nervous. I don't like the guards. <laughs> so I take them off. And I might put this one back. The only reason I took this one off because I did take this with me when I would travel. And I couldn't fit the big pieces in there. So who knows? I might put it back on. We'll see. So now we're going to put our square tape down. You can glue these two if you want to. I don't. But we take off just a little sliver so that when you fold up, it doesn't um, impede on laying flat. And then I just do both ends because those are the shorter ones. I don't want any score tape showing. I do my 3 8 of an inch. And then I'm going to come in down here, put some on stick. And we'll do another one. And then skip. And then this will be the spot to put it down. Okay, burnish that. And then we're going to fold. So. I like to fold before I stick everything, the actual hinge. So fold, skip, fold, skip, and then fold this end. Okay, now, I know this is a little backwards looking, but it's just my process. Back. I did a weird thing right there. And we're going to glue this one. You leave that one because that's going to stick it down. If you're new, this looks weird at first. So just trust the process. And then I just come in, open sesame to get it flat. It is good to work your hinges back and forth just so you loosen the fibers up a little bit. And so I feel like when I put it down like that, this is always flat. Still here. Now we're going to fold this one up. Like so. You can again go back and forth. Just loosen that all up. Now I do put score tape on these. You could do just your glue. I just do a quarter inch up at the top because I don't put my pages all the way down to the bottom like most people do. I don't like when it doesn't, you know, open and close nicely, all the flips and flaps. So 
so I do bump it up a little bit from the actual spine. But others do do that and they're just fine, so go for it. Everything with the scrapbooking is all just a preference of what you like. And you'll try some things and you'll be like, no, that's not me. And that's how, I mean, that's how most things go in the visual world. Okay. Let's get out this side. So these two fatter ones is what's going to stick on the actual book. So I'm not going to stick the pages in. I might do a process video for putting my decorative paper down. Don't quote me because I don't know that I'll have time. I mean, you would think I have time because I'm not working, but I don't know where the time goes. Like, I feel busier now than I ever did. Okay. So, you have it just like that. Come in. You can miter your um, corners. I just do a little bit. Because I do like the pages to still have something to hold on to. Plus, we make ours a little bit smaller than the actual page. But I do feel it fits nicely if it's mitered. Okay, but before I do in the video, I do want to make sure that you actually dry fit your pages. So let's do this. Actually, I could put this down. Can I? Do I want to? I don't know if I'm going to want color in there. I did do blue on this one, so I might want the pinkish red color in this one. I don't know. Let's just do this. We're going to stick this down. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to work on this. We will see. Is it on there? I don't even know that it went on there. I don't think it did. No, it did not. Hold on. It doesn't like to stick on that. Okay, well, that doesn't stick on score tape. <laughs> it is not liking it whatsoever. So we won't do that. But as you can see, it would look like this. Look like that. And then you would just come in and put your pages. So dry fit pages. So this is like that. You come in and put it on like so. And what I mean is I, I usually leave like an eighth of an inch. It's on backwards. I leave an eighth of an inch um, on from the actual bottom of the spine. So have it in there like that. So that's what that would look like. Hopefully everyone has an idea of what I'm talking about because this is sliding on me as we're moving. But it would go in like this. And I'm just going to set this here for a second. And then you would do your next page. I always have to do mine. I start with my back page. And then line it up. I can get this on. And then this would be the next page. Would go on there and then so on. So that is pretty much, and I'll show you guys just like one way. Because you can do this. I've done this before too where I'll put the hinge on and put all my pages and then just stick it down later. But I like to decorate my pages outside of my actual book. It's hard when you have flips and flaps. At least I think so. So I'm just adding a bead of glue so it doesn't necessarily stick right away. 
This is just another way you could do it if you really want to. So just come in and get in the light so you can actually see Tiffany. And I'm just about an eighth of an inch up. So you can do this with all of your pages, which I have done before too. And then come in and you can stick this whole thing down. It just gets clunky if you have a lot of stuff on there, but it's an option. But just so you guys can see what it would look like and then I just center. So you can fold these in. You can add, um, just again, a tip tip if you wanna add, find the center and just add a little tick mark so you know where to line this one up. You could do that too. But there you guys go. Let me know what you guys think of this project and definitely let me know if you're gonna make the country bunny because OMG. Oh, I did wanna show you guys one thing. So um, let me show you real quick. A couple different ways you can do the, where did I put it? The actual, so in this one, I did this for my, you know, tab. I love this like apron lace punch that I had. It's a border punch. So what I did here was just had a bigger piece than I wanted in here Then I punched it first and then I cut it down to the size I wanted to make sure I had this right. But this is a really thick, thick cardstock. I don't know, I think this is like a hundred pound cardstock. So what I would do for the, show you, for the artisan cardstock is get your scraps and where are we at? So here are some scraps here. So I just have different lengths, but they're longer than what I'm gonna need. And I like to have them longer because I like to punch and then find out, and I just basically do like an inch or whatever, but I like to find out where I want to cut so it's somewhat even. Sometimes you can't get it exact. And you know, if you guys don't care about this, you can keep going. You don't have to stay. It is really hard to see. With the light shining the opposite direction. So basically, I just double up. That's all I do. So it's no like big tip. But this will probably be the one that I'll use in my pinky red version. So if I need, where's the photo mat? So if I wanted to do it on this photo mat, and this one I did a scallop on some of the pockets and I left the photo mats just plain like this. But let's see, is this longer? Yeah. So I would just come in and glue this where I want it. So I probably would do my cut like right there or I could do my cut right there which would be cute. So on this I don't necessarily have to um, cover it up and you could just do like a tick mark. These are just all different options. I rounded the corners obviously on this one. Um, but this is where I would do my cut. So just have it in like so. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just kind of an eyeball. Kind of. Kind of an eyeball. Um, let's use this one. This one. No, it's not close. Okay. But anyways, you guys get the gist. So you can do it like this. 
and have this straight obviously and just cut off the excess and like usually when I have a punch like this I would line up so I'm straight with the line of the where the punch starts and then you have that and then you cover this side with cardstock whatever side has the seam um, but just as an option that's cute but if you're gonna have it have it big like the one that's in the other one I would double up and just punch it twice glue these together and then it's nice and sturdy just as some options but there you guys go that is the tutorial for finally country bunny which you guys have been asking for as well as the brand new CCC's Pooh's Adventures with Friends collection. I have little snippets everywhere. Um, and I, I do have an idea for a smaller version of something with the Pooh. Um, it's going to be more like a five and a half by five and a half or maybe five and a half by six. I think that's what I settled on was five and a half by six project. But yeah, there you guys go. Hopefully... I got everything that you needed to finish the project, but if you do have any questions, please let me know. Um, and I really hope that you guys have fun doing this, and this works for all kinds of paper, so it doesn't have to be just the poo or country bunny, but these are so stinking cute. Why would you not? Why would you not? Oh my gosh. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did like this tutorial, please give your girl a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, please make sure that you do. So that way you could see future Country Craft Creations design team projects, the halls, um, as well as the virtual retreats, the in-person retreats, the seasons of creativity, subscription. And don't forget, if you are interested in, you know, even thinking about being a design team member for Country Craft Creations for 2024, please make sure that you sign up. You can ask questions, etc. cetera. Um, but definitely just go for it. It's a lot of fun. Thanks for watching. Bye.